What is up, everybody? It's Armand here again with the Low Fidelity Dreams podcast. Some of you know me as Ex Machina or Rosie Bones. Today, we're going to talk about a fun topic. Some of you guys do this quite often. Some of you have yet to do this. But today, we're going to talk about collaborating. And the reason why we're talking about collaborating is because it is super important, especially for an artist's growth. This is pretty much how I got my listener count up, or at least my outreach up, a lot faster than I anticipated. This is like a cheat code in my opinion, and this is because when you collaborate with an artist, you're able to merge demographics. Now, obviously, if the demographics are different genres, now you're creating a bridge between both demographics. We're going to really talk about the process and then the how to collaborate and the different ways of doing it. Collaborating is also a subjective process, just like the rest of music. Go figure. But there are many ways to do it. And we'll go over some of the ways that I personally have done it. And you guys will be able to kind of take from those experiences. I've collaborated maybe 20 or 30 times ever, but that was enough for me to understand how to do it, at least because we've created multiple awesome projects with different artists. So, Let's uh, get to it. So, how to collaborate with another artist? Well, again, there's different ways. So let's just give you a scenario. You are wanting to collaborate with an artist that lives across the country or the world. Well, how do we collaborate? The easiest way is to do it online. You create stems. So now, what is the process? Well, this is my process. If we're doing one track, for example, you need to go in with a proper intention. So this is what a lot of artists forget, because most of the time everybody wants to do a collab, and they're like, yeah, bro, let's do a collab. And then they send them a track, or send whoever a track, and they get something back, and the intention, you know, is to create a banger, right, or something that's amazing. And then whenever the artist that you're collaborating with sends you the music back, it isn't what you want. That's really not that artist's fault. It's on you because the intention wasn't given. And so let's just backtrack here. In my opinion, the best thing to send somebody is some sort of sample of something that I've created or multiple samples of things that I've created for the one track. So if usually whenever I'm doing a track, I'll have maybe my drum elements, a few synth elements, and some of my twinkle elements that I do for the X Machina sound. All of this is stemmed out and then sent to the artist. So now, the intention is, when I create these stems, I'm going to give these stems to the other artist, and they're going to inject their intellectual property and their style into the actual track. That's just the intention. And so you always want to make the intention pure. You got to let them know. You got to communicate, okay, this is what we want to do. I want to create a piece with my original sounds, and I want you to do what you do in the track, on the track, whatever it is. So that is one kind of intention. Another way to collaborate is, let's just say there are two artists in the same room. Both artists can contribute to the art simultaneously. So if one artist throws down the bass line, the other can do some drum chops or some synth chops or put a synth on, whatever it is, and you can go back and forth. So that's the first way of collaborating together. Another way is if you have like a vocalist, a vocalist can do their part, a guitarist can do their part, a bassist can do their part, you know, just like a band. That's also a collaboration between artists. Another way of doing it, like we mentioned earlier, is you create stems. You send the stems to somebody, they do their thing, and then you finish it out by mixing, mastering, whatever it is. Now, Keep in mind, though, when you do this process, and this is only speaking from experience, when you send your track out and then you let the artist do what they need to create their part, and then I receive the track back, I've made the mistake of changing things from the original intention of the artist to something that was probably different from what they created and not what they had in mind for their parts. And so it's almost as if they created the Mona Lisa in their mind, and I just came over and was like, all right, let me squiggle an eyebrow on there real quick for you, just because. 
And when you do that, if the actual intention was altered in any way, keep in mind that it takes away from that artist's vision. And so I've done this personally, and I've experienced this personally on the other end. As long as you guys go in with the proper intention of, okay, you are doing this part, I am doing that part, or this is how the process should work, there should be no obstacle to stop you from creating a piece that you're both happy with. The biggest thing is the communication, if it does not happen, everyone thinks that everything is A-OK, and then when things are being finalized, all of a sudden you figure out that it's not what it actually was. And to prevent this from happening, you always want to make sure the intention is pure. Again, always, 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 when collaborating, make sure that you are clear with what you want to do. I've had artists where they create like a hip hop beat and then they send it over. I do my thing and then I send it back and they're like, oh, I don't like it because of this or that. All right, cool. And it's typically for me, that's the end. Like I don't really push further. Like personally, if I feel that the track was finished for my part, I'm good. Now, if they want the stems back to alter something, I would prefer that they communicate what, so then I can adjust it on my end first. If it's more of creative choices that they wanted to adjust, then you want to make sure that both people are cool with it all. I know I'm ranting at this point, but it is so important because in the end, you have to understand that you're taking one person's vision and another person's vision, and you're somehow combining them too. Now, if they first fit but then you alter it and they no longer fit, this creates a dissonance. When I do a collaboration, I love to do the two-step method. What that entails is I'll create a full idea of a track with all the elements that I want in it, and then I'll send it to the other artist for them to do their thing. Once they do their thing, really, at that point, mix and master is the final step. If there's any sort of creative change that I want to make, I'll usually speak with the other artist, especially if it's a part of what they did. This only ever happens whenever it's a mixing choice or a mixing change, just to get that vibe or that feeling. But most of the time, whenever it's like a creative decision, I tend to leave those in there just because it allows the other artists to shine and really give the collaboration their flavor. So, how can an artist collaborate when you've only received a melody? So this is fun. What you can do is you could take the melody and then you can throw your drums in it, throw your other synth elements into it, but use that melody for everything. The best way to utilize a single sample would be to do destructive editing. You will freeze, flatten, stretch, reverse, chop, all kinds of stuff, add effects, freeze more, flatten more, until you can get every kind of sound from that one sample. So typically when I do collaborations like this, I'll ask for a bunch of samples or melodies from artists, and then I'll pick out my favorite melody. And then what I'll do is that in Ableton, I will do a lot of beat stretching, reverse the sound, and then do a lot of little glitches in the sounds, and then I'll layer my stuff on top. This will allow me to pretty much use the other artists' intellectual property or their melodies in my track without really taking away from their original intention. Now, let's just say that you received stems for a track. You know, you get all the elements, the drums, the synths, the bass line, things like that. And it's only a minute long. Well, what can you do with that? So the best thing that I found is if you have samples or stems that are a minute long and it's almost a full idea, what you can do is you can refine the idea, not by removing things and deleting things, but still using what's there. Maybe carve out some of the frequencies, carve out some of the parts or the elongated notes to fit your parts in it to allow for a transition to occur near the end of what they've sent you. So then what you can do is by the time the samples end or the stems are getting near the end, you've already cut enough out and added your stuff in to where when you get to that point, you can start building a transition or a bridge from the other artist's piece 
So now your piece. I found this to help a lot. I've done this in most of my collaborations. I've taken somebody's idea that they've sent me and then I just chopped out some stuff and then added my sounds in it. And then by the time I got to their end of what they sent me, I start creating this bridge to then what is my work. And that work is typically consisting of elements that the artist sent me, but my full twist on it. And this just allows us to encompass both ideas of both artists in the same piece. Collaborating, again, is very important. In my opinion, this allows you to understand how another artist will think, but also understand their perspective, their level in production. Just being able to see and hear how another artist produces allows you to challenge what you know and how you've learned it. I've learned many things from artists that have been producing for eight, nine years less than I have. And it's because the information and the knowledge that they've learned in the time that they've produced could be different. They could have picked up a habit that they've done that really could help you in some of your production. You never know. But in the end, as long as you are doing it with an open mind, you will be able to collaborate a lot easier. If you go into a collaboration thinking that, oh, okay, maybe this guy can keep up, then the collaboration might not be for you. Collaborating should be like creating a concoction, right? A potion. Two artists or two chemists will bring ingredients to create this piece, this concoction, this drug, music. That is what it is. It is not a competition. Rather, it is a way to perfectly synthesize audio to allow you to feel the translation of emotion from what the artists wanted with intention. That is what it is. Collaborating. Don't forget it. I've started to do a little thing where in order for me to collaborate with someone, I need to make sure that they have enough work to back up what their style is. Because again, there are a lot of artists out there, a lot of new waves, new people coming up. But in the end, if you want the other person that you're collaborating with to truly understand what you are doing, you want to make sure that you guys are on the same page, near the same level of content when it comes to music. For example, I have about 43 tracks out with this style. If I were to collaborate with an artist, I think the ideal metric to compare, if I should or not, would be if they have enough music out or not. So 20 plus tracks would be like a good number. I've only created maybe under 500 tracks total. Granted, fully finished. Um, now unfinished, probably upwards of a thousand. Who knows? But I've created enough to where I understand my style, what I want out of it, what my style needs. So for example, the Ex Machina sounds need a certain frequency range in order to shine. Now when I collaborate with another artist, that piece of information needs to be clear. Like, hey, my sounds live in this frequency range. Just keep in mind, when I do my piece, this is what I need to scoop out. This is the part that I'm working in. You need to be clear with that because, again, if you are not, then your original intention will not be there because it'll be overlooked. Again, your intention needs to be clear. That is it for collaboration, guys. I know that it was quite an interesting topic. Hopefully this helps you guys. Keep an open mind. Always look out to make sure that you are sending tracks out with intention. If you're collaborating, be clear, communicate, over-communicate, and have fun. And if you guys haven't checked out my new music, check it out now. Everything's on Spotify, Apple Music, all that good stuff. Ex Machina. Also on YouTube. Got a bunch of new videos coming out. New album, Midnight Elevators, is dropping hopefully in October on Distant Ether Records. I'll be doing a bunch of promo video for that. See you on the next one.